Coming to you from an undisclosed location somewhere deep in the heart of the Santa Monica Mountains, I'm your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli, and this is On the Trail of the Nephilim. Folks, thanks for tuning in for another episode of On the Trail of the Nephilim. This week, we will be focusing on what? Drumroll, please. Giants in America. Is this something of legend? Uh, people couldn't measure the skeletons, or is it something more? Later in the show, you will hear and, and watch an interview I did with a gentleman that had an encounter with an extremely large skull. I think you'll find it as riveting as I did when I interviewed this man. But first, a word from our sponsor. Collagen sales have been surging for the past two years. This isn't for no reason. Collagen is becoming well-known for its anti-aging abilities. You only have to do one thing to look younger. That's to take collagen. But there is a problem. Most collagen supplements out there don't work. The secret is ageless multi-collagen. Health with LA is the most effective collagen for anti-aging out there, in my opinion. Thousands of users agree they notice their skin looking and feeling younger after routinely taking it. Men also report increased muscle mass. It's the best anti-aging supplement out there. The reason Health with LA works is because it uses five types of high-quality collagen instead of one. If you want to improve your skin, hair, or nail health, you need this. If you've been looking for a way to reduce the appearance of wrinkles, you'll love Health with LA. Get 51% off Health with LA for the next 24 hours by going to this custom website, www.healthwithla.com. That's www.healthwithla.com or by clicking the link below. If you come here looking for politics, prophecy, and a supernatural report, I am still doing that show, but it's only on Rumble, BitChute, and Roku. That's the only place you can get it. We call it PPS Report the full Monty, because it's uncensored, unfettered, and in most cases, my hair is on fire. However, today we're going to be talking about this, Giants in America. Most of you who've been following my work know that this picture came from the Catalina Island archives. Uh, when analyzed, you're basically looking at a nine-foot skeleton. It was This picture was uh, analyzed by three different people, three different tech guys who took it, as you'll see here and stood the skeleton up, and lo and behold, when you compare the two, you basically have a nine-footer. Now, that's not all. Um, there's, the, there's the original photograph right there. But when we went back to the museum, when Richard Shaw and I went back to the museum, the giant was cropped from the picture. There's the before. That's the real photograph. And this is what the museum was showing. Deliberate obfuscation, anyone? Of course there is. This is um, found in, uh, in Ross Hamilton's book, Fascinating Read, and I'm going to read it so you can get an idea of when people went into the mounds years and years ago, this is, this is what they discovered. So there is a hidden history that has been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world. Immediately behind or west of the altar were found three skeletons deeply charred and covered with ashes, lying faces upwards, heads towards the south, measuring, respectively, get this, 8 feet 10, 9 feet 2, and 9 feet 4 inches in length. I'm going to stop right there. They're not making this stuff up. They're not just, you know, pulling this stuff out of their hats. Some of these reports found their way in the, into the Smithsonian Institute. And Mondo Gonzalez, who's our resident archaeologist uh, on, on our team, when, when we're going out to different sites, he's uncovered all sorts of entries just like this. Look, folks, when you hear uh, this interview that I did with Richard, I think you'll find it absolutely incredible. I believe the man. I interviewed him before. Um, we actually went and turned the cameras on, and I believe his story is credible. And you'll, you'll hear for yourself what happened the day after. I don't want to give it away. I don't want to, you know, kind of spill the beans here. Watch this interview. I think you'll find it as riveting as I did when interviewing Richard. Here's the interview. Folks, I have a very special guest. Uh, this came to me. Uh, his name is Richard Chappelle. And uh, this came through a series of emails, basically. Richard reached out to Gary Sherman and Bob Ulrich with a story. And Bob Ulrich uh, at Prophecy Watchers 
gave that story to me and I contacted Richard and back and forth for maybe a week or two uh, and Richard has agreed to come on camera. I think you'll find uh, Richard's story very compelling. I believe it and it has to do with skeletons, specifically very large skeletons, what we would call Nephilim. Richard, thanks so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Let me just start by asking you this. Um, give us the backstory. Where where did this take place? What were you doing there uh, before the discovery? Well, at the time that we saw this, I worked in the oil field. Um, about 2010, the uh, discovery of the Marcellus shell was very large in the Northeast, and gas companies were drilling wells left and right. Um, and, and I worked, I've been working in the oil field since 1999, and the locations for those gas wells were fairly small, but the Marcellus was deeper, needed more horsepower, so we needed more equipment. More equipment meant larger locations. Um, this particular location that we were on was at the, uh, oh, just right in the Ohio Valley. I'm not going to give a specific location, but it was in the Ohio Valley, and it wasn't too far from the Ohio River. But when we pulled up on location with our tractor trailers, we told the dozer man that was there, there's not enough room here for all of our trucks. And of course he said, well, we'll just go ahead and try to get your trucks on there, and if we can't get them in there, we'll make some more room. Well, we tried pulling stuff in, and we tried to get as many trucks on there as possible, but it, it, it was inevitable there wasn't enough room. Well, we were not too far from a stream, and we were in what they call, we, we call it a bottom. The bottom is like a field between two hills in West Virginia. So uh, we were down at the bottom and not too far from a stream. And we could notice that there was like a, an embankment or a small berm between us and the stream. We just thought it was we're somewhere down the line. Somebody had put in possibly a wall to keep it from flooding. So the dozer man decided to just go ahead and knock that wall down so he could uh, make a little bit more room. And as he cut into the, the, the end of it, he rolled a skull out. And it wasn't just a normal size skull. This thing was 30 inches in diameter. I mean, it was huge. Of course, we're all snapping pictures of it. and. Uh, checking stuff out, and he said, no, 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 stop, stop, don't, don't, no, no. And a little bit later, uh, the company guy shows up and says, you guys have to leave. Just go ahead and get in your crew van and leave and go back to Clarksburg. We will, uh, you guys will be back out tomorrow. And we came back out the next morning, and there was armed guards. The area was covered over with a tarp, well, with a, 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 what do you want to call it, a canopy. And we were told immediately to clean, clear all of our pictures off of our telephones and make sure we didn't have any evidence whatsoever that we were, what we saw. And we had to do that before we left. And they shuffled us off to Buffalo. They just told all of us to leave. Well, we just figured, you know, a couple of weeks later that they're going to send us up there to that same location to do that well, but nothing ever happened. I'd say about six months later, I was walking through the office and the uh, dispatcher looked at me and said, hey, do you still remember that, that location over there in such and such a creek? And I said, well, yeah, I remember how to get there. He said, great, Fairmont City is in there doing that job. They need some chemical. Could you run over to them? Of course I did, and I go through the protocol, you get to the location, you tell them on the radio that you're there, they tell you to help them unload it, bring it into the paperwork into the office, so I go in, I do that, I hand the paperwork to the supervisor, he looked, I, I sign off on it, I turn around, look at the company guy, and I said, so what did you do with the big skeleton we found? Oh. And he jumped up screaming, oh, who is this? Get him out of here. I said I didn't want anybody from the Clarksburg office 
get him out of here. And I never went back. That was the last I saw, heard of it, or saw of it. But now when they when they dug that when they hit that skull, he could barely turn to he was he was pushing the berm, it just rolled that skull right out. Never saw anything else other than the skull. But it was I mean I, I, it was I can't I know you can't see it, but I mean it was big. It was it, thirty inches at least. I'd say between twenty five and thirty inches in diameter. Just a cranium. Was it, let me ask you something, Richard, was it twice the size of your head or three times, what, what, you know, compared to a normal human skull? I got a big head, but I'd say it's probably at least four to five times bigger than my head. I'm six, six. Wow. Um, I mean, I'm, I would be considered a giant from, you know, 200 years ago, but you know, this thing would here, or I would say, <coughs> excuse me, I would have to say that the judging from the size of the head, I'd say 15 to 17 feet tall. It was a pretty good size head. Now, let me ask you something. Did you notice, was there a lower jaw with it, or was that disarticulated? Was that not with the skull? Yeah, that didn't come out at the time. Okay. That, that part didn't come out. At, and like I said, the, the, the dozer man, when he rolled that out and we stopped him, that pretty much shut down all operations. There nothing more was done. And let me ask you, the, the men, the, when you arrived the next morning, armed guards are around this place. Um, do you have any idea of the people under that canopy? Any idea who might have been there? Not a clue. The only thing I know is it looked like a scene out of most of your uh, movies these days right. where they're wearing sunglasses and they're holding guns. Wow. Let me ask you something. Um, did they check your, your phone? I mean, did you have to show them your phone? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody had to show, their, show them their phones before they left, and they had to clear all pictures. So you definitely don't have a picture of this, correct? Oh, no. Yeah. No, you, if, they, if they even suspected you had a picture on the phone, you weren't leaving. Was there ever any follow-up? after the event? I mean, other than when you went back to that office, did anybody ever say anything? Did, did your crew ever talk about it? What, what, give me the aftermath of, of the discovery. I can't really say that we ever really talked about it. I mean, we, yeah, yeah amongst ourselves, yeah, we would have talked about it to a point, but you're asking me to remember conversations that I just, it's been, this is 2021, we're talking 2011, 2012, the last time when that happened, so. Yeah, and it's only a very small yeah. window of time. Well, Richard, oh, yeah. thank you so much for coming on the record. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your boldness and your courage. And let me just say this, folks. There is a hidden history which has been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world. Why? Why are they cloaking this thing? Why did they... Um, get everybody's cell phones and make sure all the pictures were eliminated. Why is it that there are armed guards there? Why is it that there's a canopy over this thing? Why can't the American people and the people of the world understand and see for themselves that giants are real? They were real. That the days of Noah and the biblical narrative is the truth. And folks, this is as close as I've gotten to, um, to a, you know, a, a, an artifact like this other than books and, of course, our Catalina giant that I discovered the picture of back in 1919. And that was a very large skeleton, certainly much larger than a human being. It was around nine feet tall. This is something else, again. You know, you place it at 15 to 17 feet tall. And we have reports of, of that there may have been, that's a really big guy. And, and reports in, in the record indicate that some of these guys were that big. But Richard, uh, thank you so much for coming on the record. We really appreciate it. Folks, we'll see you again right here uh, on, on our special daily show, On the Trail of the Nephilim. If you've got stories, pictures, any artifacts like this, please don't be afraid. Give me an email, la at lamarzulli.net, la at lamarzulli.net. Richard, thanks again for coming on the record. We really appreciate it. Well, that's it. I mean, think about this, folks. He gets there the day after, and there's armed guards. There's a canopy over the site. There's obviously archaeologists, people are doing this thing. The cell phones are taken, right? 
The cell phones are taken and all those pictures completely erased. Why? Why are they doing this? Why can't the American people see this? What are they so afraid of? Why? In my opinion, it points back to a supernatural worldview. It points back to the veracity of giants in the land. And that goes into the Nephilim, which, of course, is my wheelhouse. And that's why we are on the trail right here. If you've got a story like that, if you've got a picture, anything at all, uh, a, a large artifact, shoot me an email, la at lamarzuli.net. Meantime, uh, you can check out all seven of our On the Trail of a Nephilim series by going to streaming.lamarzuli.net, streaming.lamarzuli.net. Download them all. And folks, I got to tell you, um, <laughs> with, with stories like this, this guy's not making it up. He's not making it up. Too many details. And if he, when, he, when I've asked him a story multiple times, it's always the same thing. You know, the bulldozer went in, the blade, the skull rolls out 30 inches in diameter. Can you, it might have been, you know, 12 to 15 feet tall in, when it was alive and roaming. Native Americans talk about the giants with six fingers, red hair, double rows of teeth. We'll get into that. This week, we'll be talking all about giants. But let's move on to our UFO update. There, of course, is the classic disc-shaped object with Pentagon UFO unit in the spotlight. Your port mentions off-world vehicles not made on this earth. So the cat's out of the bag. Things are relatively quiet right now. We'll see, and we're keeping an eye on it. We'll see if new information comes out in the coming months. I'm sure it will. Um, they sort of teased everybody and then hit again under their desk. But they'll be back, and we'll see what they uh, show us in, in, in future episodes on Tucker Carlson and the mainstream media, like 60 Minutes. But continuing, FBI joins investigation of animal mutilations linked to UFOs. So I want to talk about this because this next one is a shot of uh, an animal mutilation. This is May 9th, 2021. Look at the, the, the area around the jaw. The flesh has been totally excised, like with laser precision. So who would get up and, and how would you get this type of equipment into a field where this bull was? And again, this is this year, so it's not going away, is it? And then they just leave the carcass there. In many instances, the, the carcass of the cow or bull is completely drained of blood. The predators like coyotes won't get near it, and coyotes eat anything. Trust me, anything. That's why when scavengers, you know, you say, well, where are the bones? Because scavengers go into a carcass, and within a matter of, you know, a month or two, whatever, there's nothing left of the carcass. But carcasses like this, will, unless the rancher comes in and removes that, it will sit there and just decompose. The, the scavengers, coyotes and others, won't even get near it. Why is that? And why is the bull just dropped back into the farmer's field? Why is that? So we're going to be talking a lot about cattle mutilations this week. And I might, I'm might i going to try to get our good friend Chuck Zukowski to do a Skype interview with us. I think you'll find his work absolutely fascinating. I remember when I first started examining the whole uh, cattle mutilation phenomenon, and I got Linda Moulton Howe's video, Strange Harvest, and it was extremely disturbing. Folks... When you look at stuff like this, uh, FBI joins investigation of animal mutilations linked to UFOs. Uh, it's real. And it's part of the phenomenon which most people don't even know about. So, you know, when you talk to people about the UFO, oh, I saw a UFO and, and the lights in the sky and I was mesmerized by it, or uh, Demi Lovato, which we talked about a, a while back, and it, this wonderful encounter. Well, how does she wash that? with the cattle mutilations. How do you, if they're so friendly and so wonderful, why do they need to do this? Why do they need to kill a bull and strip its flesh? Ranchers who uh, are tending their cattle are scared when they come upon this because they realize something is going on. Oftentimes, ranchers will report seeing strange lights in the sky. So this week, we'll be getting into cattle mutilations. Remember, Jesus warns us, even the elect would be deceived if that were possible. And uh, something is coming. Something's already here. The phenomenon is real burgeoning and not going away in all of its parts. Not only are there sightings, but there's cattle mutilations, there's abductions. Are hybrids walking amongst us? 
In my opinion, yes, they are. You remember, Jesus warns us it would be like the days of Noah when he returns. What differentiates the days of Noah from any other time in all of history is the presence of a Nephilim around the earth. Fallen angels are taking women and, and, and creating this hybrid being known as the Nephilim. And folks, that's why we are on the trail. Because there is a hidden history that has been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world. Don't forget you can get our free UFO disclosure, The Coming Great Deception and the Luciferian Endgame, by going to streaming.lamarzulli.net. Download it for free. Pop the popcorn. Invite some, uh, some friends over, folks. You can also buy the DVD along with the book. Sale price, and we're going to keep it there for a while. Why? This information is vital. I can't give you the book for free and a DVD for free, but you can watch the film for free. Lots of information. If you want the DVD so you can play it over and over and over again, if you want to read the book, which has riveting information in it, important information, go to lamarzulli.net, lamarzulli.net, and check it out. Thanks so much for watching On the Trail of a Nephilim. Remember, we'll see you in the air or on the air. There is an ancient site in New Hampshire that may date back 4,000 years. It is called America's Stonehenge. There are precise alignments of standing stones, which reflect the solstices and equinoxes. There is also a controversial stone table, which may have been used as an altar for human sacrifice. The site is built on an 18 and a half year lunar cycle, like that of Stonehenge, England, and also the Great Circle Mount and the Octagon Mount complex in Ohio. At America Stonehenge, massive stones were fitted together to create this mysterious site, but whoever built it seemingly abandoned it. You will see just how incredible this site is as we reveal what appears to be a deliberate and orchestrated relationship to Stonehenge, England, as well as other megalithic sites around the globe. Journey with us as we explore America's Stonehenge.